Hello, welcome to Healthline. Uh, our guest today is Dr. Beryl Ochery, DDS, and we're glad to have you here. Uh, thank you for presenting last week. Um, and we do have some questions that we wanted to follow up with. Um, our first question that I have for you, are there some uh, natural remedies, natural ways to keep your mouth healthy? Hello. Hello. Well, first of all, my name is Beryl, and we're talking about dentistry. It's part two. Last week we started, and today is more of the Q&A portion. So Jared asked that there are natural remedies. Um, yes, there's a few. Um, they're not things that we learn about as much in dental school, so we have to kind of do our own research after. One would be baking soda. Um, it's, it's a little bit abrasive, but it's a good way if you add a little bit to your toothpaste from time to time to kind of help clean your teeth better. Um, something similar is charcoal which also in a lot of cultures they use for their dental health. Um, same thing, it can kind of whiten your teeth naturally, but you don't want to use it too much because it can be abrasive over time. Another is salt. Um, salt kind of helps heal wounds, as we know. So salt water is really, really good for your gums. Or if you have any sort of sore in your mouth, salt water or directly applying salt to it, which will burn a little bit, but salt water is also a, a natural remedy that's really good. Um, this is probably a really basic question, but what really brought you to dentistry? So I personally came into dentistry because I was into science and I wanted to have an opportunity to do something in healthcare, but the overall body seemed overwhelming to me and um, it all kind of grossed me out. But the mouth didn't, um, <laughs> so I chose dentistry because I saw it as an opportunity to actually be the hands and feet of Jesus to a person in their mouth because they're in a vulnerable position and I have an opportunity to relieve pain and I have an opportunity to impact them. Um, so once I was in high school, I was like a sophomore or junior, I personally had braces and I had some issues with my teeth that I had to have resolved. And in the process of having all of that done, I decided this was a career I wanted to go into. And as I shadowed dentists, I got to know more about the field. I realized that um, this could be a way that I could impact people by relieving pain and helping them build their confidence. So I was very excited about that. That's what got me into it. Awesome. Uh, I know we're all interested in preventing pain. Um, so here's a question. When should we brush our teeth? Should we brush them before breakfast in the morning because we have stinky mouth? Or should we brush them afterward? Also, when should we floss? Okay, that's a great question. Um, the very first thing I'll say is the most important thing is that you are doing it at the right interval, which is twice a day. We're brushing once a day for flossing. My personal recommendation is before breakfast, be first thing in the morning before anything else for a couple reasons. One is um, it's the first thing you do, so you hopefully won't forget, because sometimes if you say you're going to do it after you eat, you might forget. And the other is that every time that we eat, most likely the food in our food, the the, the pH of our food usually makes our mouth more acidic and it can weaken your enamel. So when you eat, you don't want to brush right away. You never want to eat and then brush right away because you never know if what you eat, ate was acidic. For example, if you ate an orange and you brush right away, you could actually erode your enamel. So whenever you eat and you brush after, you need to wait at least 30 minutes. So to make it less complicated, it's better to just brush first because you don't have to worry about that 30 minute increment. Most people don't know that, but that's something that your dentist can teach you about as well. Um, but I recommend first thing in the morning. And flossing, actually, you could go either way, but I personally prefer flossing in the evening, but you could do it either morning or evening. Because in the end of the day, you kind of clear everything out before you go to bed. Yeah. Um, this has been something I've been wondering for a lot of dentists, actually. How do you approach people who are afraid of the dentist? Yes, so I encounter this every day in my practice. Um, people are always scared because a lot of people have been traumatized because dentistry has changed a lot. Um, back in the day, um, they didn't always numb people. Um, they didn't even wear gloves, actually, <laughs> back in the day. But then we started gloves and numbing people. And also, um, back in the day, dentists were trained that when you're taking care of a patient and you're working on their tooth, just drill and drill and drill and drill until there's no tooth left. Like, drill, make it bigger. But now the way we're trained is be very conservative, be very gentle. So the way I approach it is... Again, I, I pray every day that God will use me to be able to make people feel comfortable. And so the way I approach it is just trying to relax the patient, encourage them, um, and just verbally just always talking to them. And I make small talk with them. I ask them how they're doing, and I try to build that relationship so they're comfortable, so it's not just me getting in their mouth and start drilling or something. Okay. Um, how young should we bring our kids to the dentist? 
So surprisingly, you can start taking your child to the dentist at six months old. Uh, most people are not doing that, but once they have that first tooth in the mouth, we can check them. We do what's called a knee-to-knee -knee exam. So I put my knees to their mom or dad's knees, and the baby just puts their head back into my lap, and I look in their mouth, and I brush their teeth really well, and I put fluoride. So at six months of age, but I think what's more practical for most people is like when they have a toddler around age one, that's when most people would probably start, and they could see either a pediatric dentist or a general dentist. But that way it becomes a habit for them, and they're able okay. to... So following up on that, what do we need to know about fluoride? Yes, so fluoride, um, there's a little bit of controversy around fluoride, but all you need to know about fluoride is that it is a natural mineral that we have found actually helps to strengthen teeth. So when fluoride goes into the tooth, it changes the composition and makes it more resistant to cavities. So fluoride is in most toothpaste at, in just the right concentration that it will prevent cavities. And then when you see a dentist, we also have topical fluoride that we can apply to your teeth. We do it in kids usually regularly, and we can also do it in adults. It's still beneficial. So fluoride is just um, a mineral that is really good for your teeth. You just don't want to have too much fluoride and overconsumption of it. But they also put it in drinking water and also most dental products and at just the right concentration that it's going to be preventive. Um, another question I was thinking of was how have you seen God through your job? Because I know that's something a lot of us want to know before jumping into a career. Yes, I definitely have. Um, I, so all of the health professionals you'll hear c come up week after week, we're going to be talking about the actual healthcare aspect, but the spiritual aspect. And um, I'm always trying to be a minister of healing. Like we have a book here by Ellen White, Ministry of Healing. So I'm always trying to be a minister of healing. So the way I've seen God is that just the opportunity when I see patients and they're in pain or they're in a vulnerable state, just being able to meet their need, which is at that point a dental need, but then they've, they've built trust with me to where sometimes, a lot of times patients open up to their dentists maybe too much, like I've become a therapist, because <laughs> for some reason, because they're laying back, they feel very open, and so I'll sit them back up and they'll tell me things. I've had someone tell me about uh, death in the family. I've had people tell me about marital issues, all sorts of things. And so my role is I don't only help them with their teeth, but I'm there to encourage them and to uplift them, and if possible, to also point them to Christ. So if possible, I will try to bring up my faith as well. And that has been an opportunity that I looked forward to since I started when I was in high school like you, and I wanted to become a dentist. The whole way, I was just like, how, God, how can I, this be more than a career, um, but more of a calling? And so that's what God has done is he's given me opportunities to encourage people um, in ways that I didn't even think I would be able to. Um, teeth grinding, is that something that's very common? And also, how will you, would you deal with teeth grinding, um, whether at night or maybe other times, um, w with a child versus an adult? Yes, so teeth grinding is very common. For most people who are doing it, you don't know you're doing it. So what we're talking about is while you're sleeping at night, you're grinding your teeth or you're clenching, clenching your teeth um, un unbeknownst to you. And the way we know is when you come in, we look at your teeth and we can see the cusp are flattened. Um, we can see it on the x-ray, sometimes we see it in the mouth, and it's very common. Um, other people will end up with TMD or temporal mandibular joint disorder, and so you start to feel that there's some tension in your jaw joint, or you wake up and you have a headache chronically, or you have a lot of tension and tightness here, you might be clenching or grinding your teeth at night. So as a dentist, as part of my exam, is trying to figure out if you're doing that, and the way we treat that is typically an, an, um, a occlusal guard or a night guard, which is something you wear at night that's going to prevent you from grinding into your teeth. You grind into that instead. It's like a retainer you wear. It's also common in children, but it's because their teeth are changing so much and they're losing teeth and gaining new teeth. So in children, we don't do night guards because things are changing too much. But when they're an adolescent and they have their whole adult dentition, then we could probably do a night guard. And if it's really severe and you've actually ground your teeth down, because in some cases, the tooth has gone from this length to this length. Like I have patients who they're, all their teeth are short and they've physically ground over time, um, especially men with really strong um, jaw joint and jaw, strong masseter muscles and all of that. Um, in those cases, we might actually have to fix the teeth as well. We can't, it's not just night guard. We have to now like put a filling there or try to put crowns on top to fix it. But usually night guard is the first way. To, and you'll notice they sell night guards in the drugstore. Like if you go to the dental aisle, you'll see it looks like something like an athlete would use and you boil it and you bite into it. Those work, but they're not the best. Um, your dentist can actually make one that's custom fit to your mouth that's going to be the most efficient at preventing grinding. And I think those eventually wear out and you have to get another one. They eventually right. wear out. They won't last very long, but the custom made that we make with our lab based on impressions is going to last you for years and years. 
Um, back to what he was asking you, what are some other habits that people probably do all the time but don't know that it's damaging their mouth? Um, I mean, a lot of it's going to come back to diet um, as far as damaging your mouth. Um, sugar content, but other things you might not be thinking about are things that you bite. So some people like eating ice. Um, it's just like a, hab a habit, or some people like biting their nails. Anything that you're biting that's not food, it might damage your teeth. Um, so those are some habits that people have, like ice biting and things like that. And I think we have time for just maybe one or two more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, probably several of us have kids who are around the age we're thinking about braces. Are braces necessary? Uh, at what, what age? Or how do you make decisions on adding braces? That's a really great question. So most people, when they think of braces, just think you have crooked teeth, um, you need to straighten them, which is true. Um, but there's other benefits to having straight teeth. One is that your teeth are easier to clean when they're straight. Um, when you have very, very crowded teeth, sometimes you build up more plaque and calculus, and you can get floss in there more easily if they're straight. So that's one thing. And the other thing is that um, when you have straighter teeth, your bite comes together. The way that God has designed our teeth is there's a way that ideally our teeth would fit but most of us deviate from the norm on that. So when you get braces, we can get you back into that ideal bite. And so for a child, usually around the age of 12, um, 11 to 13 or so, is when they'll have majority of their adult teeth. And that's a great time to start braces. But any time around there, even earlier, is when they can start to see an orthodontist and get a consultation. Um, and so there's braces, and there's all other options, such as Invisalign or Clear Correct, which are clear trays that straighten your teeth. Um, so And those can be done at any age. But at least by age 12 or so is where you would consider for your child, especially if you've noticed that their teeth are either very spaced out or very crowded, that they will be a candidate for that as well. Um, I guess this would be the last question. So which one do you think is a better idea, braces or like the Invisalign? Um, it depends on the age and the person because with the Invisalign, which is what we're talking about, it's clear trays that you change them each week and they straighten your teeth. There's a compliance issue, um, which means you have to wear the tray for 22 hours a day. And so every time you eat, you have to take it out and you have to put it back in. So for teenagers, some of the teenagers can do that, some of them can't. But for adults, it's a great option. So if you're thinking to yourself, I've always wanted to straighten my teeth, I never have. It's never too late. I've done it at all ages. I'm, I'm a general dentist, but I also do clear aligners in my practice. So um, it can be done at any age. Um, if, you're, if you're wondering if you're a candidate, come talk to me. Um, and I know some people last week also asked me for cards, and I forgot to bring the cards. But if you come find me, I can tell you my, where, my, where I practice. It's very close to here if you're interested in coming. Um, but it depends on the age. For most adults, though, um, clear aligners are good. Yeah. Thank you so much, um, Ania, and also Dr. Barrel, for joining us for Healthline today. Uh, it's been really uh, helpful, and we're just great to have a good start to Healthline. We hope that everyone has enjoyed this, and if you have more questions, um, look forward to our next Healthlines in the next few weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.